Wow, we're going to see Muriel versus Overhaul from this chapter of Bog no Hero Academia. Let's get straight into it. Now, guys, I know what you're saying, you know, like the death flags are up. We're seeing Muriel come in. And to be honest, ever since we got Muriel's introduction, everyone's been saying this boy is going to die. Now, I don't know how I personally feel about that. First of all, I don't know, because Horikoshi, he's playing with my feelings. You know, the whole fight between All Might and All For One, I thought All Might was going to die at that point, but he didn't. So, I don't know if um Hor if uh, Mirio's actually going to die. And there's one reason why I think he's not going to die. I've kind of got two points. One, I've, one for, uh, for and one against, you know, the argument of if Mirio's going to die. One of the reasons why I don't think Mirio's going to die is because if you go back to the start of the arc... Deku said something, and you know how Deku, to be honest, nearly every arc, Deku, future Deku, if you remember, you know, you got to remember the fact that the whole story, you know, My Hero Academia is all set in the, in the future, but Deku is just telling his story of how he become the greatest hero, so, you know, narrator is future Deku, future Deku, so, at the start of this arc, Deku says something along the lines of how my, I don't know, I don't know if he says my complicated relationship with, uh, Mirio and like Sir Naitai or like with Oval stuff like that. I don't, I can't remember, but he says something like my complicated relationship or my journey with these guys have begun. So he, but he said my long. He said long. So I really don't think it's gonna end here. Basically, I don't think Mirio's gonna die here because it's too short. It's too soon. That's my total opinion right there. I just think it's too soon. Um, not only from what Deku said, but also from a, a writing point. For one, we love Mirio too much. Like, it, it, it's not at the climax for his character to die, if, if he was going to die. Second of all, I don't know, it's, it's just the way that his character has been built up for him to be the next number one. He can't die right now, like, I, I personally feel like there will be multiple number ones before Deku. That's how I think it's gonna happen. But, you know, let me not digress. So, let's go to the point where Mirio can die. Of Mirio actually possibly dying from this fight. It's in the past, guys. Like, we're going to a flashback. And when we go to a flashback, stuff like that, I don't know, it just really does give me the... the it really does put me on edge because I'm thinking, why is Rokoshi bringing us back to the, I don't know like the way that he did it it's kind of making me a little bit apprehensive thinking okay this is not looking good it really isn't the fact that it's in the past so we don't know what's happened to we don't know the the condition of present Muriel now another reason why it's a little bit scary is let's say yeah okay he, two minutes this is he he I, he rewinded it two minutes after mirio went away so present time we don't know how far back that was maybe 10 minutes ago maybe uh 12 15 minutes we don't really know but let's say mirio and overhaul fought and let's say mirio won as in you know maybe saved eri or uh, escaped with eri mirio would have came back he would have come back to Sir Naita. He would have come back to Deku and all those guys and be like, look, we've achieved the mission. We've got Eri. That's why we came for. Let's bounce. But, you know, that doesn't happen. That hasn't happened. You know, like, we haven't seen Mirio. So that's either left two reasons. One, um, the fight is still engaged. They're still fighting, which would be pretty hype. Like, I can't wait for this to see this fight. This is, I'm so excited for it. Um, Or two, Mirio's dead or... Pro Probably extremely injured, like he's incapacitated right now, can't move. So it's one of those three reasons. Um, so either way, what we're going into right now is going to be so unbelievably exciting. But I'm just, I'm just a bit scared because I, I love Mirio. Like, I freaking love the guy. He's so awesome. Not only is he unbelievably powerful as well, the way his character was built up and Horikoshi introduced him, I was like, this guy is a legend. I love him. So I really hope he doesn't. Uh, die, but the facts of the matter is someone's got to die. Like the way that this arc was being portrayed, we know that this arc is going to be is, is extremely dark. I, I know a lot of us guys were thinking it was going to be Sun Eater. Who knows? It may not necessarily be someone of the big three, but someone may possibly die. Someone may. Now let's actually get into the whole part about the possibility of Mirio and Overhaul fighting. 
how would this actually go about? Now, Mirio's quirk is the is basically it makes him untouchable. It makes him, him intangible. So it's really hard to get a hit on Mirio. We saw it when Class 1A was trying to fire him. So it's kind of interesting because Overhaul's quirk re relies on touch, you know? If he touches you, you're gone. So it it really does depend on who gets the first shot in it, really does. But I do think Mirio kind of has got an advantage on the fact that he can become intangible. And we know that Mirio's just not a character who's powerful because of his quirk. He's not like that because when we found out about all the limitations of his quirk, we knew that he was extremely strong because of how he worked around it how he be able, how he was able to control it and you know use it to such a degree even in what's the word even in i'm just gonna use perspective even in perspective of the limitations you know so it shows you how strong mirio is so mirio's not the one that is that is powerful just because he's got an op quirk that's not it it really isn't so i do think him running in against overall i don't think it's an immature decision we know of the stats we know that he's got um what's the word he can walk the he can walk the walk he's not he's not just chatting air you know he's not just blowing hot air out of his mouth with his words so yeah i am a little bit confident in muriel but then again it's freaking overhaul the man came in killing magne then killed rapper what five times am i incorrect or he killed rapper new uh, like five times so you know um it's, yeah, it's going to be a tough fight and I'm just a little bit like, oh snap, what's going to happen? I'm a little bit scared. But aside from that, let's get on to the other parts of the chapter. You know, I really do love Togo and Twice and I was really, uh, I was really, what's the word? Um, not, uh, what am I? I'm finding words this week. I'm not, I don't know today. I don't know what's about it. But anyway, I was really uh, uh, sad, you could say. Um... I didn't get to review these past couple of chapters. I've been away for like three weeks. So, you know, when I was reading these chapters, I was like, bruh, like Shigaraki as well. But either way, let me just talk about Togo and Twice. Now, their interactions throughout these chapters have been absolutely phenomenal, especially in this chapter. You really are seeing how, how fragile Twice actually is. It's actually, I mean it in the sense of his personality. Like, the man is on eggshells pretty much. He's going... Flipping back between dual personalities. At first, I thought he, that only happens when his mask came off, but I think it's got to do with what Sir Night Eye did. You know, the whole point. No, that doesn't make sense. This is the past. My bad. Anyway, that doesn't make sense. But either way, you, you know, with tw twice his personality, I, I, I nearly forgot for a second that we're in the past right now, but twice his personality really is so fragile. I didn't realize to that much on the extent because you know at first when you when I got in seen twice character when you got introduced I thought this guy was just talking in like oxymorons like opposites back and forth but nah it's his personality is kind of switching because we see it in this chapter and he's just like oh that wasn't me that wasn't usual me or like it's so funny because he's just like I'm not gonna tell you anything I'm not saying anything and then literally the next panel he's just like my quirk is to double anything I see so it's just like. The man is hilarious. I love him twice. And I really do love the combination, the um, the pairings of Twice and Toga. Do I ship it? Um, Yeah, even though Toga is like a, a high school kind of student and Twice is an adult, I don't know. But either way, <laughs> yeah, let's not let's not talk about that. Now, the whole f um things about their quirk, what I really found interesting is actually Twice's quirk more than Toga's and in the sense of what twice has to do to create a clone he has to get all these measurements i really love that this is why horikoshi is so awesome because he goes into so much detail it's not like twice looks at someone he's like yep yeah, okay i've copied you no he needs to measure you out he needs to get all the sizes exactly right otherwise his clone won't be that good so that was pretty awesome and yeah, and i love it how he's got you know the tape measure that's really nifty i really like that that's quite cool now Toga's quirk got me thinking. It really did. Toga's quirk works on she ingests the blood, and by her ingesting the blood, then she can, you know, transform it into anyone. Now, Toga says something along the lines of, you know, if I drink a cup of blood, I can be in that in that, you know, I can be in that person's 
visage, you could vis visage, you could say for a day. Now, Kemi or Kami, I believe her name is. How? This is where it gets kind of creepy, and it's kind of like wow, just like it makes you think. The 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 guy from She Can't See You High, the hair the hairy guy. He said that Kimmy, Kami, I can't remember if it's Kimmy or Kami. He said that she hasn't been acting the her usual self in the past couple of days. Days. So how many I don't, how many cups of blood has Toga taken? Now, this can either mean that, you know, she was literally taken as hostage by Toga. Because we knew that Toga was using her for some days. So Toga took a lot of blood from her. Meaning she's not in a good state right now. Critical condition probably. She's lost a lot of blood. I don't know how many. I don't know if that would make up. Maybe would that go up to some litres? Or maybe just a couple of pints. Um, either way. Could she be dead? Or could she just be missing? Either way. It's kind of serious. Like wow. It just makes it all the more. Kind of like. Wow, what's just happening, you know, Horikoshi. Toga is so villainous right now, like, she's so evil. And I, and the fact that she did it to the student as well, I'm just like, wow. Is I don't, I'm just kind of lost for words right now, because I'm just trying to think. If she, imagine if she's dead. Because it, it is a possibility. Like, Toga will kill someone. So, you know, it's a little... We're, we're kind of dodging on the, the grey line right now. No, we're not dodging on the grey line. We're kind of, you know throwing back and forth some kind of different possibilities right now we don't really know which one's which and i think that's what makes it all the more scarier because i i doubt this may even be brought back up again maybe so but the fact that it's left in mystery is even all the more eerie that's what i think now there's one more thing that i want to talk about with twice and it's the fact about his quirk he says that the only difference is stamina now this really does make me happy because i you know what Last couple of chapters when it was Sir Night Eye fighting rapper, I was just like, yeah, that's pretty cool. But then again, I was thinking, hang on, he's a clone, a clone, so maybe, maybe the power, the strength is a little bit diminished. But that's not the that's not the state at all, actually. You know, when twice clones you, your power is still at the same level. The only thing which has been diminished, the only thing which varies is which is different is the stamina. So when Sir Night Eye was facing off against Rapper. Rapper's strength was totally there. He was there. He was the same guy that fought Fat Gum and fought... That was the same power that fought Fat Gum and Kirishima. So that just shows you how strong Sir Night Eye is and how quickly he took him out just like that. I was like, wow, that was kind of crazy. So basically, the stamina and endurability for twice his clones are quite low. They're not like the, the original people. So I thought that was pretty cool. So, you know, that's pretty much about what happened in this chapter. I love that we got to see a bit about Deku. I love that we got to see him do something. Because I, I haven't really been thinking, oh, like, I'm missing Deku. Like, it's not about that. That's not what Boku no Hero is about. It's not, like, all driven by Deku. The ca All the characters are amazing. So I've really been fascinated uh, seeing that. Whole I'm really being fascinated about all, you know, the focusing on other characters. And I really love it that Horikoshi's been doing that. But it was cool that Deku did something, you know. Went out and took out Irunaka. Now, before I just end the video, this video, video? <laughs> before I end the video, this is kind of one interesting thing. Um, The Villain Alliance. Twice and Toga's motives, not their motives, but their, their movements, they basically betrayed the Yakuza. Now, is was that on orders of Shigaraki? Maybe so, but maybe not um, explicitly. Because, you know, at the start of this chapter, the guy with the, the hat and the beak, he's, he would basically ask them out front, did Shigaraki plan to give you any plans on betraying us so it kind of it made it look like he's got some kind of truth detector quirk kind of thing um it's just it's just pretty cool it's, it's quite a pretty cool quirk or maybe it's it may not be but i don't know that's what i kind of got the vibes from especially if you look at the panel behind like you see the circles in that it kind of look like hypnotism kind of thing because you also see it on twice his panel as well i believe so yeah they said no so explicitly it, Shigaraki went like betray the Yakuza no but the way that he said you know take responsibility of your actions maybe that could imply to twice do the right thing that is you know 
get payback on what happened to Magne, maybe something like that. So yeah, this chapter of Boku no Hero is really awesome, and you know it was stated in this chapter that Magne was really trans, was actually transgender. It was a, um, it was a her. So that's awesome. I've spoken about this before, uh, with his name Tiger. And basically, I'm not really going to go into much depth, but basically what I love about it is the fact that the whole fact that, you know, they're transgender or they're just, you know, different to everyone else in Bug Hero. I love it that Horikoshi is not pushing it in our faces and he's like, look, my series has got character which, which characters that are transgender and we're pushing that equality. Like, he's not pushing it. And what's awesome is the fact is that their whole sexuality is not central to their character. Like, he doesn't focus in it so much. And Magne... Her, her character, she weren't just, oh, the transgender person. It weren't like that. So I think it was really, I love, I, I think it's really awesome what Okoshi's doing with his characters. And it just shows you that this series really is driven by characters, not by the plot, in my opinion. And it just brings out real life to these characters. It fleshes them out really, um, it really does. So, you know, that's enough for me, guys. So please tell me your thoughts in the comments below. It's good to be back. And this chapter was lit. It was a short, shorter chapter. But it is so damn hyped. Like, I think it just seemed a bit short with all the white pages. Um, Either way, though, I'm so hyped till next week. We're going to see Oval versus Mirio. Guys, this is going to be lit because we've been theorizing. We've been discussing this from the start of the arc. So, you know, if you like anything that I'd say, please drop a like. That will be greatly appreciated. Now, what did you think about this chapter? Please let me know in the comments below. And subscribe for weekly reviews of Book and the Hero if you haven't already. This is Shinigami Sam. Peace out, guys, and goodbye.